please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance, your flag. Your flag. Councilmember Irby? Here. Councilmember Page? Here. Councilmember Wassinger? Here. Councilmember O'Mara? Here. Councilmember Dolan? Here. Councilmember O'Leary? Here. Councilmember Harder? Here. Mr. Chair, we have a quorum. We have approval of the journal of the meeting March 22nd, 2016. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Ayes have a motion carries. Journal is approved. We have no bid openings. Move to communications. Mr. Chair, there are no tax compromises this evening, so we'll move to zoning matters. Under zoning matters, item number one, six district. Receive file and county counselor be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number two, six district. Same. So ordered. Item number three, six district. The same. So ordered. Mr. Chair, moving on to road and bridge matters, item number one, seventh district. Receive file, plan, specifications, and detailed estimate of cost be approved and the Director of Procurement be authorized to advertise for bids as recommended, and a copy of this report to be sent to the interested parties. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have a motion carries. Other communications? Uh, on your other communications, item number one, first district. Receive, file, and the agreement be approved as recommended. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have a motion carries. Item number two, second district. We see file and the agreement be approved as recommended. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries. Item number three, second district. Uh, <coughs> sold. So ordered. <laughs> Item number four, sixth district. Receive file and hold on the order of business. So ordered. Item number five, seventh district. Receive file and a change of owner be approved as requested. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries. Item number six, fifth district. T file and county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number seven, first district. Same motion and, uh, through item number eight. So ordered. Item number nine, all districts. T file and refer to the director of the Department of Planning for review and response, and that will be the order. Item number 10, fifth district. Receive file and county council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So ordered. Item number 11. C file and the county council be directed to prepare appropriate legislation. Same motion for item number 12, and that will be the order. Item number 13, first district. Same motion through item number 14. So order. Item number 15, sixth district. C file and county council be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation. So order. Item number 16, second district. Same motion. So order. Item number 17, fourth and sixth districts. C file. Contract in an amount not to exceed one million nine hundred five thousand six hundred twenty-five dollars and seventy-three cents be approved and awarded to M and H Concrete Contractors Incorporated, the lowest response bidder as recommended, and authorization for revision to the existing traffic control devices be approved as requested. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries. Item number 18, first district. Receive, file, and contract in an amount not to exceed $2,500,000 be approved and awarded to Crawford, Murphy, and Tilly Incorporated as requested. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries. Item number 19. <coughs> Receive, file, and a matter be held on the order of business and referred to the council as a committee to hold, and that will be the order. Item number 20, all districts. Receive and file, and that will be the order. We have no add ons this evening, Mr. Chair. County Executive? Nothing further this evening. Thank you, sir. Uh, no special committee reports. We'll move to the public forum. Uh, please state your name and address and <clears throat> please keep your comments to three minutes. First speaker this evening is Jim Landry. How's everyone doing? Uh, good, thank you. Good evening. This is my first time doing this, so just bear with me. Uh, uh, my name is Jim Landry. I'm with the Women's Safe House. I'm a director of development there. And it's a pleasure coming here this evening to share with you what we're doing to help children and women that are affected by domestic violence. 
Uh, first of all, I want to thank all of you for supporting Women's Safe House, being a partner, working together to change the lives of children affected by domestic violence. You know, your tagline, keeping kids first, is reflected in our children's program. <coughs> the children's program is designed to provide supervised play and regular rest, counseling, and support groups to meet the needs of children exposed to domestic violence. Women's Safe House Children Program served on average 232 children the past two years. 37% of them came from the county. As an agency, we provide the following services, activities, temporary shelter services for battered women and their children. We provide a safe shelter, meals, clothing, personal hygiene supplies. We have a child development program that uh, helps homeless children find a place to have safe shelter and clothing, and they must be 19 years and under, and we provide this service based with the money that you provide. We have a respite service program that provides the primary giver time to rest and heal so where she could take care of her children. We have a parent education program developed in 2007. This is to prevent child abuse and neglect called PetCan. PetCan is based on a behavior management model to reduce the incidence of child abuse and reinforce protective factors for children. We have group sessions that are provided for children residing in shelter and are used to both educate and reinforce interventions to reduce the risk factor associated with child abuse. We also have a safe date preventive program that teaches teens how to stay out of harm's way. Last year we uh, came up uh, with the, uh, not we didn't create it, but we went to a logic model that they use in the public health system. And what this does is it helps us to identify what our outcomes and what our impact will be. And just an example of that, when most children come into the Women's Safe House, less than 50% of them trust their peers. Within six weeks of staying in the Safe House and going through our counseling and coaching, 90% of the children will develop positive friendship with peers. We also have found out that 80% of the children would identify a safe place or person in their lives. Most children do not take kindly to strangers when they come from an abused household. They're very fearful, and that's why we decided to use the logic model because it helps us to stay focused on what our mission is. That's all I have. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker is Mary Schaefer. Good evening. It's my pleasure to be here. It's good to see all of you. Many of you have met before, but I would like to give you some information that you may already know, but maybe need updated on, and that's we're all getting older. It's something we do not escape. My business is the, being the executive director of Mideast Area Agency on Aging, and we provide services for seniors aged 60 and older in St. Louis County, Jefferson, Franklin, and St. Charles counties. <coughs> our job, our business is booming, as I said because we are all getting older. And the problem is that although we have more seniors than we've ever had before, we don't have the funding to support the services that exist out there. Our agency provides Meals on Wheels. Uh, we provide over 23,000 meals in the county each month. And those meals, we'll say, are, it's more than just a meal because it brings a visit to people who are homebound as well as people <coughs> gathering together in the senior centers. And as you know, St. Louis County has the highest population of seniors in the state of Missouri. Despite that high population, we've had to close senior centers, particularly in the North St. Louis County area because of increased costs and inadequate funding. <coughs> so one of the opportunities you have is the Senior Services Fund that I think you heard about last week. That gives us the opportunity to provide local resources that can fund senior services that will make a difference in helping people stay in their own homes, which is our target group. We help people remain in their homes as long as possible through services such as transportation, the meals, information and assistance, uh, family caregiver assistance if a person is caring for someone over age 60. We know that there are more seniors than have ever been all around the world, particularly in St. Louis County, and we want to be able to serve those seniors. I would ask you to give consideration to this Seniors Count initiative, the Senior Services Fund, because that can really go a long way to helping people stay in St. Louis County. I know you support the age-friendly initiative 
That's something that is unique in Missouri. I don't believe there's another one in the state. But we want that to continue to grow through the Senior Services Fund. We want St. Louis County to truly be a place where seniors can live throughout their lifetime and not have to move away because of lack of services. So I thank you for allowing me to be here tonight. I appreciate Dr. Page bringing this up, and I hope you'll give careful consideration because it truly can make a difference to all of us as we're aging. Thank, thank you, Mary. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Well, may I ask a question? Sure. Um, where do you get your funding now? It's state, local, and federal. And the, what is your annual budget? It's right around $9 million. And, and that includes all state, local, yes, and federal? Yes, and contributions <coughs> that come from people who receive our services. And, and how long have you been aware of the Seniors Count initiative? Oh, it's, I've known that that exists, that opportunity exists for 10, 15 years because there are 41 counties, I believe, and, and rising in the state of Missouri that have already passed the Senior <coughs> Services uh, Fund. And where they have passed it, they have been able to provide exponentially more services. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Mm -hmm. Next speaker is Ron Zitniak. Pulte left. I had some, uh, I was hoping that they would be here. After listening to their uh, rosy picture that they painted uh, about the Schussler Road uh, development that they were going into, um, I would like to point out that maybe they're not the paragon of virtue that they say they are. Uh, the last time they said that they have all this input from the citizens that live on the road. The only time there was ever a meeting uh, was in August of 2015, and that was not necessarily a meeting. It was them dictating what they were going to do with the, the plan um, for the Schistler Road development. And when we brought up the question about why they needed to change from R1 to R1A, uh, the answer was very simple and very straightforward and probably the only honesty we've gotten out of them uh, since the whole things began. Um, they did it because they couldn't make enough money with it. Now, for your consideration, two years ago, we had this come through the same way with uh, the same situation, and the council rejected the last development plan, and it's exactly the same area with the same type of development, but just in a, a scaled down plan. It was rejected, uh, except that their, their plan is a smaller version of the same thing. You cannot go forward without zoning change from R1 to R1A. It was deemed unacceptable by the council then. It is and should be deemed unacceptable now. Section 1005.150 of the code says that the single family residential lot design standards, where there is a question as to the suitability of a lot or lots for their intended use due to the factors such as rock formation, soil conditions, steepness of terrain, flood conditions, or other adverse natural conditions, the department may, after adequate investigation, withhold approval of such lots until engineering studies are presented to the department which establish the method uh, proposed to meet any such conditions is adequate to avoid any danger to the health, life, or lot improvements. This section accurately describes the property for the, all the factors of consideration. Anyone who has seen the site can attest to that. Dave Scares already uh, addressed the problems that he has found on that uh, site. Uh, with his 30 years of experience, um, he's credible for that information. His detailed evaluation of the, sign the, 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 the site plan that was submitted by Pulte illustrated errors in surveying, topography, and other factors that questioned the viability of the Pulte Homes plan, which can only be, be described as faulty as best. This section also explains the original wisdom of the, minutes, the, the zoning. How much? Your, your time's up, sir. Oh, it's too bad. I was only getting started. <laughs> thank, thank you, Ron. Can I come back later? <laughs> Next 
I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to get back up in front of you and speak again. One, it's just two short points. One of consideration is, is that nearly half the homes in this Pulte development are going to be built on fill materials. Almost anyone who's ever had a home built on fill knows that they're subject to settling and that there's development of foundation cracks, road problems, ceiling wall problems, and even sink problems within their property boundaries. This has happened in a subdivision on our street right now, Arbor Knoll. The second point I'd like to bring up <clears throat> is that in the past 19 years on Schusler Road, I've lived there for 25 years, in the past 19 years on Schusler Road, there have been 12 teardown homes that were rebuilt. The assessed property value that St. Louis County has on those right now range from $440,000 to almost $1.5 million, but they were built with the integrity of the neighborhood preserved. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next speaker is Ann Zitniak. and I live at 12944 Meadow Hill Lane. I've lived there for 54 years. Um, my father built the home when it was nothing but a little more than three acres of a field. Uh, he planted all the trees. We've worked the land. And there's a lot of other people that live just the way we live there. Um, my, our children, our child, now has her children there, and we are handing this down generation upon generation. Um, we do a lot of community service. Uh, we've got a therapy pony that we allow children to come and, and ride on. We have Girl Scouts come by, schools come by. We take some of our animals to the Lindbergh schools requested by the teachers, and that's enough of that. Just to let you know that we share and love our property. Um, and the road is no different today than it was when we moved there when I was 12 years old. I'm now 66. And it was a dangerous road then. It's a dangerous road now. Um, I went around and collected um, signatures for the petition. And there are people over on Mens Hill Lane, if you're familiar where Kennerly Road is. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, Notting Hill. Notting, I think it's called Notting Hill. Um, all the people over there were just up in arms over the possibility of the proposal of the change in zoning because they said they're going to be facing the same thing too. There are numerous homes there, vacant land that was vacant because of the elderly people um, that have passed away and everything's going up on the market. Um, I received a letter from one of them, an email from one of them, and it said that uh, he would be at the, the meeting tonight. He was ter terribly sorry that he couldn't be, um, and he does live off of Men's Hill Road. Uh, but he had to be at a meeting regarding his son at 4.30. Um, so he said that he had to make that his priority instead of coming here. Um, he said he can relate to the developers who decide for us, who really knows what's the highest and best use of land. This may be another example of someone who really doesn't care about anyone other than themselves. Show us a need for more expansion in the county versus St. Louis City first then show us the need for more inventory of houses in this specific area, not modification of zoning in this specific area. If those two points are met, then we'll address such which specific area best meets the need of this area in general to allow additional housing. They're putting the cart before the horse. Um, I've never had one person in any of that area by St. Anthony's Hospital, which all deliveries, by the way, for the hospital are made on Schistler Road. Schistler Road is a dead-end road, one way in, one way out. And there's all kinds of signs to watch for pedestrians. Cross traffic does not stop. And if any of you have been in that area, you know. Um, just one more thing quickly. There's a 12-year-old girl that does artwork of angels. And uh, on the back, it says, Stand Strong. And it's by Anna Louise. She's 12 years old, and she's a survivor of three open heart surgeries, and she loves drawing angels. 
She wrote a letter that I was going to copy, and I ran out of time. I don't know if you could copy you it. You give it to Jen. You give it to Jen, like, and she can pass it out. I would like <clears throat> each of you to read this letter. Um, because of the anesthetic that was given to her for these three open heart surgeries, um, she's very um, well spoken, but she cannot write very well. Her spelling is atrocious, but I would like for you to try to make out what she had to say. And um, this girl's my granddaughter, and she loves the farm she lives on, too. So okay. thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Ann. <coughs> Here's Patricia Ann Smith. out that I could place the photos on to show the entire county council uh, the flash flooding that is going on on my own property on Schuster Road. Unbeknownst to Pulte when they first purchased the, uh, the uh, whole plot or you know potentially purchased it there are actually two flash flood channels on this one piece of property. Uh, it's you know contiguous it's all joined together. Uh, Mr. Gerber lives and is impacted by the back run which comes from around the YMCA across the back of the property onto his and his neighbor's area. The other comes down the street and I have the photos to prove it as I've shown in the pre-meeting here and so I'm going to leave these with you tonight. Please be sure you see them. Uh, some the first ones are more effective than the last ones but they're all important and I actually own all the properties on the near side of the photo. I'm a co-owner of it and so I was very shocked this occurred not this past winter, but the spring prior. And I had been out of town for a number of years. While I was gone, unbeknownst to me, St. Anthony's overdeveloped on its own property without any of us being told practically. And then they built a second medical building, and then the Y expanded. And more parking lots, more parking lots, some that are unnecessary totally, which is addressed in these reports which you'll be getting. Um, these are, I would like to say, please, they are a must read. I know I don't usually ask that, but the first one is one set of report there, and then the second one contains a double, and then there's uh, my bio, so that you know who I am. I think some of you are familiar with my work priorly. So uh, these are revisions of the past thing that had been put forward for the uh, Planning Commission, but they're updated as well. So these will be left with Ms. Ms. Frank, or Executive Frank. Uh, I'd like to read you the poem that Pulte inspired me to write. Uh, it does get a little facetious in the middle, but it has a good message, and so I hope you will understand it. I know you will. <laughs> this is no rape and run, and it's addressed to any con construction company who in the past performed overdevelopment and overconstruction. Construction can't be just a rape and run, a quick attack and a quick ending of what you've begun without any responsibility for the quality of your construction. Then it's off to despoil the next neighborhood? Is that your idea of doing good? Or is that your warped concept of fun? Trying to ruin homeowners' lives and life investments? Ah, it is a wicked web you've spun. Your presentations were filled with bragging and some deceptions. What tales you've concocted and begun? Less than two years from conception to completion? I don't see any need for speed in the Olympic timer's gun. Is it your creditors that you're hoping to outrun? You shouldn't attempt to circumvent um, current zoning to get more bushels of bucks, even if you could. Please consider our rain runoff and flash flooding problems. We certainly wish you would. We didn't expect another brazen attack a la Attila the Hun. Your frivolous, unconcerned approach in presenting this travesty did both anger and stun. We've been repeatedly attacked in the past, and with that, we wish to be done. That's three minutes, Mr. Chair. Oh, okay. is that it? Well, yep. you'll have Thank it in your packet. <laughs> you can read the rest of it, please. Thank you very much. I call on them to join the International Brotherhood of Ecological and Environmental People. <laughs> okay. So. Thank you. Last speaker is Mr. Gerber. <clears throat> Hi, my name is John Gerber, and I live in the far end, close to the Merrimack River of Schisler Road. We've lived there for 42 years now. Ralph Gerber, who may speak to you sometime, lives immediately adjacent. We are not relatives. But at any rate, we uh, <clears throat> turned in 220 signatures against this proposal to the Planning Commission <coughs> staff. Somehow it didn't make it to the Planning Commission board. There was a vote taken here of the people who were there at the time. 
which there was about five more votes for the proposal than there were against it. The difference was that I think it was 37 for against the proposal. Every one of them lived on Schussler Road. The others, there was not a single one that would not benefit <coughs> financially from this going through. The Planning Commission staff admitted that they knew that, but those numbers did go to the board. So it's very discouraging. These 368 people, I went around and collected a lot of these, and these people are not just disappointed, they're just plain mad. They can't believe, well, you can believe it when you see what's happening to one of our presidential candidates and how he's getting the votes from people that just can't trust government. They'd like to hope, but they felt I was naive when I said, no, our consul will not let something like this go through. It's against almost every single zoning rule, and we can share those rules with you if you want. You probably know them. They have to make an exception to every one of those rules in order to put this through. 368 people, every single one of them above 18, once this does not go through. It is used, they even use Butler Hill as a precedent. They say, oh, this won't be a precedent. But they use even lots on Butler Hill Road that adjoin the back of this with about a seven acre split between this and the new program as an, a reason why this should be there. We'd like to truly believe that we have a part of government here in the county that is going to do what your law says and what all of the neighbors want. So I appreciate it very much. If you have any questions, I didn't think so. Thank you. Thanks, John. That was the final speaker, Mr. Chair. Introduction of bills. Bill number 71, introduced by Council Member Page, an ordinance appropriating and setting apart $1,331,094 from the unappropriated balance of the Convention and Recreation Trust Fund for support of <coughs> debt service payments on the Series 2016 AB Soccer Complex Special Obligation Fund. Bill number 72, introduced by Council Members Page, O'Meara, Dolan, and O'Leary, an ordinance calling and providing for the holding of an election in St. Louis County, Missouri on the 8th day of November 2016 for the purpose of submitting to the qualified voters of St. Louis County a proposal for St. Louis County to levy and collect a property tax of five cents for each $100 of assessed valuation for the purpose of providing services to persons aged 60 or older. Mr. Chair, that is all the bills. Perfection of bills. Bill number eight, introduced by Council Member O'Meara. Oh, please. That'll be your order. All right. Bill number 66, introduced by Council Member O'Leary. I move to perfect bill number 66. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have motion carries. Bill number 66 is perfected. Bill number 67, introduced by Council Member Dolan. Uh, I move to perfect bill number 67. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries. Bill number 67 is perfected. Bill number 68, introduced by Council Member Page. I move to perfect bill number 68. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries. Bill number 68 is perfected. Bill number 69, introduced by Council Members O'Meara, Page, and Harder. I move to perfect bill number 69. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries. Bill number 69 is perfected. Bill number 70, introduced by Council Member Harder for Council Member Wassinger. I move to perfect Bill number 70. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries. Bill number 70 is perfected. Uh, final passage of bills. Bill number 116, introduced by Council Member Dolan. Uh, please hold Bill number 116. It's ordered. Bill number 51, introduced by Council Member O'Leary. I move for final passage of Bill number 51. Second. Roll call, please. Councilmember Irby? Aye. Councilmember Page? Aye. Councilmember Wassinger? Aye. Councilmember O'Meara? Aye. Councilmember Dolan? Aye. Councilmember O'Leary? Aye. Councilmember Harder? Aye. Mr. Chair, on Bill number 51, there are seven ayes. Bill number 51 is finally passed. Bill number 61, introduced by Councilmember Dolan for Councilmember O'Meara. Take it up, move final passage, Bill number 61. 
Second. Roll call, please. Councilmember Irby? Aye. Councilmember Page? Aye. Councilmember Wassinger? Aye. Councilmember O'Meara? Aye. Councilmember Dolan? Aye. Councilmember O'Leary? Aye. Councilmember Harder? Aye. Mr. Chair, on Bill number 61, there are seven ayes. Bill number 61 is finally passed. Bill number 62, introduced by Councilmember Dolan. Move for final passage, Bill number 62. Second. Roll call, please. Councilmember Irby? Aye. Councilmember Page? Aye. Councilmember Wassinger? Aye. Councilmember O'Meara? Aye. Councilmember Dolan? Aye. Councilmember O'Leary? Aye. Councilmember Harder? Aye. Mr. Chairman, Bill number 62, there are seven ayes. Bill number 62 is finally passed. Bill number 63, introduced <coughs> by Councilmember Dolan for Councilmember O'Meara. Take it up, move finally passed. Bill number 63. Second. Roll call, please. Councilmember Irby? Aye. Councilmember Page? Aye. Councilmember Wassinger? Aye. Councilmember O'Meara? Aye. Councilmember Dolan? Aye. Councilmember O'Leary? Aye. Councilmember Harder? Aye. Mr. Chairman, Bill number 63, there are seven ayes. Bill number 63 is finally passed. Bill number 64, introduced by Councilmember Dolan for Councilmember O'Meara. I can take it up, move final pass, bill number 64. Second. Roll call, please. Councilmember Irby? Aye. Councilmember Page? Aye. Councilmember Wassinger? Aye. Councilmember O'Meara? Aye. Councilmember Dolan? Aye. Councilmember O'Leary? Aye. Councilmember Harder? Aye. Mr. Chairman, bill number 64, there are seven ayes. Bill number 64 is finally passed. Bill number 65, introduced by Councilmember O'Leary. I move for final passage, bill number 65. Second. Roll call, please. Councilmember Irby? Aye. Councilmember Page? Aye. Councilmember Wassinger? Aye. Councilmember O'Meara? Aye. Councilmember Dolan? Aye. Councilmember O'Leary? Aye. Councilmember Harder? Aye. Mr. Chairman, Bill number 65, there are seven ayes. Bill number 65 is finally passed. Moving on to resolutions, we have three this evening. Mr. Chair, resolution number one, introduced by Councilmember Dolan. I move for adoption resolution number one. Second. Uh, Roll call, please. Councilmember Irby? Aye. Councilmember Page? Aye. Councilmember Wassinger? Aye. Councilmember O'Meara? Aye. Councilmember Dolan? Aye. Councilmember O'Leary? Aye. Councilmember Harder? Aye. Mr. Chair, resolution number one, there are seven ayes. Resolution number one is adopted. Resolution number two, introduced by Councilmember Irby. I move for adoption of resolution number two. Second. Roll call, please. Councilmember Irby? Aye. Councilmember Page? Aye. Councilmember Wassinger? Aye. Councilmember O'Meara? Aye. Councilmember Dolan? Aye. Councilmember O'Leary? Aye. Councilmember Harder? Aye. Mr. Chair, on resolution number two, there are seven ayes. Resolution number two is adopted. Resolution number three, introduced by Councilmember Irby. I move for adoption of resolution number three. Second. Roll call, please. Councilmember Irby? Aye. Councilmember Page? Aye. Councilmember Wassinger? Aye. Councilmember O'Meara? Aye. Councilmember Dolan? Aye. Councilmember O'Leary? Aye. Councilmember Harder? Aye. Resolution number three, there are seven ayes. Resolution number three is adopted. Moving on to unfinished business, Mr. Chair. Item number one, second district. Uh, the County Council will be directed to prepare the appropriate legislation and introduce the vote. So ordered. And moving on to new business, Mr. Chair, we have five prepared orders this evening. Move for adoption of orders one through five. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I say motion carries. Orders one through five are adopted. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I say we are adjourned.